into it. You know, it was another uh, uh, day of grandstanding and uh, speech making and hissy fitting in the Senate today. It was day three of the confirmation hearings for Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. 58% of Americans support Judge Jackson's appointment to the Supreme Court. It is the most support a Jackson has had since Thriller came out. And <laughs> She has said uh, that the fact that she was even nominated shows how far we've come as a country, and so some of the Republican senators on the committee have been hard at work to show how far we haven't. Three of them in particular, <laughs> Holly, Graham, and Cruz, have been putting on a three-ring circle jerk this week, desperately <laughs> trying to get a sound bite that might make it onto Fox News. Unfortunately for them, they made it here instead. Josh Hawley of Missouri <laughs> has been working so hard to insinuate that Judge Jackson a Harvard-educated 51-year-old mother of two daughters is somehow cool with child pornography. They've been beating this drum for three full days now until finally Dick Durbin, who's the chair of the Judiciary Committee, had enough. Uh, you have done what 80% of the judges have done. You're in the mainstream of sentencing when it comes to child pornography cases. I also think it's ironic that the senator from Missouri who unleashed this uh, discredited attack refuses to acknowledge that his own choice for federal judge in the Eastern District of Missouri has done exactly what you did. And at that moment, for the first time in his life, Josh Hawley realized that he sucks. <laughs> and by the way, I want to take another look at Dick Durbin if we can bring that up because um, I want to look at all those supplies. Like, <laughs> a lot of sanit... Are they sterilizing a submarine? What's going on? <laughs> Dick Durbin isn't the only dick on the Senate Judiciary Committee. No Republican has been more hot and bothered than Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who promised he wouldn't make this into a circus and then picked up right where Hawley left off. I have no doubt that you find child pornography disgusting as the rest of America. You're a mother. You seem to be a very nice person. Does anyone else smell Lindsey's butt coming? <laughs> so if you're listening to my voice today and you're on a computer looking at child pornography and you get caught, I hope you're in, your sentence is enhanced because the, the computer and the internet is feeding the beast here. <laughs> Wait, what kind of scenario? How sexually defective do you have to be to be listening to Lindsey Graham's voice and watching child pornography <laughs> at the same time? It's the scariest dual monitor setup imaginable. The award for most original question of the week so far goes to Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee, who's the only uh, Republican woman on the Judiciary Committee, and yet is still trying to figure out what that word means. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me oh, a wait, definition. I, hold on. I know the answer. You are a horrible woman. Is that? <laughs> and of course, then, Ken Cruz, Cruz had to get on all the action. He loves talking at these things, and he really wants to know what a woman is, too. You couldn't define what a woman is. Uh, that you were not a biologist, which, which I think you're the, the only Supreme Court nominee in history who's been unable to answer the question, what is a woman? Yeah, she's also the only one in history who's been asked that disgusting question. <laughs> Sweaty Teddy then uh, took some time to pose an important philosophical question that has many wondering if we might see him in a parade sometime soon. Under the modern leftist sensibilities, if... if I decide right now that, that I'm a woman, um, then <laughs> apparently I'm a woman. Does that mean that I would have Article Three standing to challenge a gender-based restriction? No, it means you'd be the world's ugliest woman. It <laughs> means you would be a woman. <laughs> what a slug of a human being. I mean, this, this poor lady had to sit there and listen to this pontificating from a man who wipes from back to front. Did you know that, Guillermo? <laughs> <laughs> and then the really got out of hand after they broke for lunch. Oh! This was the reaction when a mountain lion paid a visit to an Irvine shopping center near Sand Canyon and Irvine Center Drive around lunchtime Tuesday. I wasn't expecting this on a Tuesday. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait a minute, that, yeah, a Monday and a Wednesday, yeah, you could see. But definitely not a Tuesday.
Um, this was uh, quite um, some hearing. In fact, uh, I believe we have one more clip from the back to the Senate. So we are now at about 2,000 people are jumping on the phone lines as they should because, like, this whole you should really buy everything in the hour. Yeah. Except I mean, for the one item that's sold they've, out. They've all been, like, really great together. Can yeah, you, now you know why I'm not back for two months. There's nothing left. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing left. Well, and take it from me. I'm not just the president of the week by nature volumizing foam. I'm also a customer. This would be very confusing for Ted Cruz, right? <laughs> Hi, Ted. How are you? Hey, remember uh, that lady Hillary Clinton? She ran for president. Well, Hillary announced yesterday that she tested positive for COVID, which is surprising for somebody who's been alone in the woods for six full years. But <laughs> says she's feeling fine. Uh, she's feeling fine, but if her husband covers careless whisper on his saxophone one more time, she's gonna kill him. That's how deep we are in the upside down world right now. Hillary caught a virus and Bill didn't. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, I'm actually feeling very beautiful right now. <laughs> President Biden is in Brussels to, uh, to see where the sprouts he loves so much come from. Now, he blew out this morning on Air Force One to meet with European leaders. You know, when Biden was a kid, Air Force One was a balloon. So it was, <laughs> but um, I don't know, does anyone else get nervous when Biden travels overseas? It's the same feeling you get when your grandma renews her driver's license. <laughs> like, is this gonna be? The president is expected to announce a new round of sanctions uh, to punish Russia tomorrow. We took their money, uh, their yachts, their vacation homes, their McDonald's, their Netflix. I, how, I don't know how many sanctions we have left. No more frosted mini wheats, guys. It <laughs> must be driving them nuts. Ukraine is asking us for a no-fly zone. We're offering more sanctions. We're like the house that hands out toothbrushes on Halloween. But the United States today did officially declare that the Russian military has committed war crimes. And while the situation is bleak, that hasn't stopped the Ukrainian people who got some help filling sandbags in Odessa from Bon Jovi. Cool drums, dude. Maybe grab a bag and help us fill them up. <laughs> this war of uh, Putin's not only has it been a, a human rights crisis, it's been bad for business. Nestle today announced they will suspend the sale of non-essential products uh, like Kit Kats and Nesquik to Russia, which would be very effective if Vladimir Putin was four years old. But <laughs> and it's weird that the company that makes Nesquik took the longest to pull out, right? But Nestle's makes a lot of stuff. Did you know Nestle's makes Hot Pockets and dog chow? You have to be very careful in the shipping department at that company. <laughs> so Nestle is out and these oligarchs are still losing their super yachts. Our allies have been seizing uh, any super yacht they see and one company's turning that into a travel opportunity. Take a vacation, fit for an oligarch. Spend six nights and seven days docked in an exotic location on a luxurious and impounded Russian super yacht. Sit still in Spain, be immobile in Italy, or be paralyzed in Paris. Enjoy bottles of confiscated champagne that cost more than your house. Because your fun is at their expense. Seize the day and the yacht aboard a Zarnival cruise. The ultimate staycation. You see, what there is, there's a popular, I don't know if you're aware of this, there's a popular cruise line called Carnival Cruise, and this rhymes with that. So, We're learning more about what went down with Mike Pence during the storming of the Capitol on January 6th. Turns out what went down was him. According to uh, an inspector from the Secret Service who testified before the House Select Committee, Pence was taken to a loading dock beneath the Capitol building and kept there for hours. They docked him up to protect him. Apparently, the idea was to load the vice president into a truck containing mayonnaise and hot dog buns so he could escape in camouflage. <laughs> it was tough to convince Pence to go along with the plan because any discussion about going through the back door makes him uncomfortable. But, <laughs> but just imagine this. The vice president of the United States is huddled under a loading dock, hiding from an angry mob from his own party, mind you, while his running mate sits in the Oval Office eating bacon bits and cheering them on. <laughs> and that wasn't even the biggest story of the day today. <laughs> 
There's a lot to keep track of. Donald Trump's pillow pal, Mike Lindell, is still out there, still being sued for $1.3 billion, but he's not laying down. He's fighting back. I'm going to tell you, right now, we're doing, I've been working on it five months. It's a class action lawsuit against all machines. Wow, that sounds like the worst Terminator movie ever, doesn't it? It's a fascinating legal strategy. And of course, I wanted to know more. I'm interested in Mike, so we tracked him down. And he's with us now, the Mike Pillow Man himself, Mike Lindell. Hey, Mike. Mike, it's Jimmy Kimmel. How sorry did you start with me, and now I spilled my mug of Hot Pocket. Oh, sorry. You mean hot chocolate? No, I mean Hot Pocket. I liquefy them, and I drink them as meal replacements. Oh. This one was garlicky butter crust frozen pepperoni. Well, Mike, that sounds delicious, and you look great. Me? Well, what about you, Jim? Wow, you, you look gorgeous. You're doing something with your hair. Uh, yeah, it's a wig. It was a bit. I can take it off if no, you're cool. No, please don't. I'm getting harder than a crossword puzzle in Parade Magazine, I tell you. You know, I'll probably just take it off. What are you, in a cabin? Woo! I'm in a shanty. A shanty? It was my grandpappy's, but then he got killed by fireworks, so it was handed down to me. Okay. I use it as a bunker for the electromagnetic apocalypse. Because it's got no machines of any kind. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you about. This plan you have to sue all machines. That's right. The machines being process served as we speak. And I assume you mean voting machines. No, sir, e, Jimmy Tingle. I'm lawsuiting all machines. If you can plug them in, I'm taking them to court. W why are you suing all machines? Because he didn't just steal the election from Don Trump. Now the machines are trying to make me look like a fool. How are they doing that? Last week, I was going to give a speech on voter fraud on the bottom of the dunk tank at the Chippewa County Fair. Uh -huh. So I washed my clothes. And look what the trees this washing machine did to my swimming sweater. <laughs> oh, it's a, wait a minute, you swim in a sweater? I do. My nipples get dangerously erect in chilly water. They're like two little switchblades. So because of that, you're suing your washing machine. You're darn tootin' I am. I'm suing Amana and Maytag and Hot Point. I'm suing toasters and blenders, alarm clocks. I'm suing that vibrating massager, you know, that one that feels so good when you just sit right down on it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm especially suing my electric razor. Oh, why especially that one? Well, if you must know, and I'm going to tell you, the other morning I was manscaping to keep my pants pickle looking smooth, just as the Lord intended. And that little bastard took a mean chunk clean off my dinger. Got oh. blood all over my dungaree. Oh, no. And look what happened when I washed them. Oh, no. That's... <laughs> You know, Mike, I think you can solve one of your problems just by doing your laundry in cold water. I tried that, Jim, but look, my nips got so sharp, they shredded my dress shirt. Well, this, this is I'm a real... I'm telling you, switch you gotta, plates, Jim. You got to figure that out. This is a real problem for you. Oh, hey, Kai, it's... Wait a minute. It's my nephew calling. Juno? Uh, what? Okay. What? I told you, look, if the toilet's backed up, just go in the litter box. Stupid kid. All right. Takes after his mother. Sorry yeah. about that. No, it's fine. Why, are, why aren't you suing your cell phone, by because the way? Because a cell phone ain't a machine. Oh, yeah, it is a machine. No, the H-E double hockey sticks, it is not. Well, yeah. what is it, then, if it's not a machine? It's a fruit. It says apple right on it. OK. <laughs> like, now, even you're not that out of it that you Whoa. think that. Uh oh it's time to feed my bear. You have a bear? Yep, I've been feeding a grizzly bear to help protect me from the local kooks. Okay. Hey, come here, Smokey. You want an apple? Eat an apple. All right. Smokey. Thank you, Mike. It's great to talk to you again. I hope everything's okay. Yeah. All right, that's Mike. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie until you click the subscribe button. So please click now. I'm hungry.